Legal Industry Predictions for 2022, Episode 271. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit-generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Profit with Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and I am excited for this time of year. Uh, Most people are excited for this time of year because it's holidays and Santa's coming and presents and Hanukkah and all of that jazz. I'm excited because I'm a planner and I believe in planning. I believe in setting your, um, your goal or your... Uh, target destination, and then mapping your route and staying on course to get there all year long. Now, I'm not a believer in only planning once a year, but most people pay attention when you talk about planning at the beginning of the year or the end of the year. So it's that time of year again, and I'm excited because two things. First of all, this episode's going to be a lot of fun to do but also because we have a amazing little mini event that we put together for you. It's going to be taking place from December 20th to the 23rd. And uh, we've got a, a, a bunch of rock star guests joining us. And they're going to help you work through mapping out your best year ever for 2022. We've got marketing experts that are coming to tell you where you need to be focusing on in your marketing next year. We've got sales experts coming on to tell you how to best close those new clients as the year progresses. And we've got staffing experts who are going to talk about team building and leadership and how to best grow and lead your team leading into the new year. And then finally, I'm going to, on the final day, do a session on um, setting your goal and mapping out your plan based on the, the information you received in the first three days. So this is a four day event, but it's not full days. It's only an hour and a half scheduled every day. Actually, some of the days are not even an hour and a half. So 12 o'clock Eastern to one Uh We're trying to do this without taking a ton of your time, but at the same time providing a ton of value and it's absolutely free. So all you got to do is go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash annual planning, profitwithlaw.com forward slash annual planning. We are going to link that up in the show notes as well. Show notes for this episode are at profitwithlaw.com forward slash 271. Go check it out and click the link, sign up and register. We'd love to have you, even if it's just for some of the days. Uh, by signing up, you'll get reminded, you'll get links, and all of that jazz. So um, it is time for my annual predictions episode. Um, We can do a check-in on how I did last year. So I had my team go back and listen to the episode from last year and pull up the things that I predicted. And it was a long list. It was a long episode. Uh, There was a lot going on last year. We were in, you know, in the heat of COVID or, you know, just got starting to get used to it. And I made a lot of predictions. I don't know if it's going to be conducive for us to go through all of them. Um, On the marketing side, I, you know, I said that we're going to see our referrals from, you know, uh, common referrals from uh, word of mouth. Um, People referring people to our law firms are going to slow down based on what we historically have seen. And we're going to see more of an emphasis on Google referred traffic, uh, how important your Google My Business profile is, SEO, um, and reviews for your law firm. And I think that that has come true. I think that I don't have data to back it up. But I do know um, what my clients are seeing. I know what questions people are asking when we have discussions on various workshops that we do. And it's clear that referrals, uh, reviews, I'm sorry, reviews on Google are really, really important right now in uh, people assessing whether to even have a conversation with your firm. 
Uh, so that prediction definitely came to fruition. Uh, I also said that we're going to see an increase in adoption of video, both on Facebook and YouTube. I haven't seen a ton on Facebook, but what I have seen uh, is a lot of law firms starting YouTube channels, and I've also seen uh, some serious adoption of uh, things that we haven't really expected, like uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels and uh, and TikTok. Uh, so there's there's a lot of attorneys who are turning to uh, those newer technologies and having success with it. So very interesting to see where that leads. Um, in the sales arena, uh, I said that we're going to see a lot more consults happening remotely. Um, and indeed, uh, I mean, that that was a no-brainer, right? But in Clio, Clio's legal trends report, uh, they actually reported that not only is it happening more often, but clients are demanding it. And uh, law, law firms who are not providing that capability are losing out on potential business by not having that there. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to see an increasing push to payment plans and definitive pricing. I actually don't know. I don't have any data on that. I didn't see. I, I didn't see a lot of people adopting it. I know that LawPay was playing around with adding it. I don't even know if they ended up adding it or not. I haven't really stayed on top of that, um, so I don't really know. Uh, where that went with payment plans uh, in the sales arena. And uh, let's see, staffing. Uh, I said we're going to see a greater adoption of a virtual workforce. And indeed, I think a lot of people have been hiring uh, remote workers. And because they're remote, they're able to look outside of their uh, immediate geographical area, which is very helpful, especially right now in a very tight jo job market. And uh, I also said we're going to see an, increasing, an increase in gig staff, meaning uh, staff that you bring on for specific types of work. That I haven't seen uh, or I haven't heard about. So I think that one might have been a bust, but definitely the first one is true. Uh, then in the finance area, I said we're going to see more awareness from the law firm owner on cash flow. And maybe for some, that's the case. But I can tell you that for most, it's not. And it's going to be another prediction for 2022 because I have faith in the legal community to continue to get educated and smart about owning a business. And I think that that is, uh, I think that, I mean, just the adoption of listeners on this podcast is proof that, that you're thirsty for that knowledge. So uh, I think it's going to be something that happens in 2022. We'll get into that. Technology. Um, my prediction was that that was going to be the biggest impact in the upcoming year. And I think that that is spot on. I think that a lot of firms focused on technological adoption, uh, whether it's um, upgrading their practice management software, automating their systems, getting, uh, get, getting to a place where you have your intake using a CRM product of some kind, whether it's Lomatics or Clio Grow or one of the industry uh, wide available ones like Salesforce, Zoho, things like that. Um, and I, I said, I think we're going to see a greater adoption of client self-service tools. I actually don't think that happened. And I think that uh, in a way, although it's available in practice management software, I actually think that, that clients are not really buying into the client portal tools that are being made available to them. Uh, I think that, that uh, clients are wanting more of a manual interaction now, they might be interested in electronic communication, like they might be interested in text messaging, Facebook messaging, other forms of communication besides for email. Uh, but my, the, and I don't, again, I don't, we're not doing studies for this. So it's just my feeling based on the conversations I'm having, what I'm hearing, that really clients are not excited about needing to go in, into a portal to access something. They, they want it to be emailed to them. They want it to be messaged to them. They want to get updates on the fly. They don't want to just be told, hey, look, go check in the portal for an update. Uh, we're going to see a greater adoption of self-service capability where they can either be packaged or something they can buy without ever needing to interact with an attorney. I think that was ahead of its time. Um, basically, what, what that prediction was is that uh, with technology and allowing things to um, be streamlined to the point where the attorney does not have to be hands-on in its creation. So you basically have templated, uh, you know, a, a draft of a document and they put in 
inputs and based on that inputs there's some logic behind it and it, it creates it for them and basically creating a self-service portal for you there's a p software company that does that it's rally um there's another software company that uh was doing something similar they didn't actually create the marketplace but they created the automation piece and that's loya and loya was purchased by clio so obviously th that is a a big component of the future. Clio is willing to invest in buying a company uh, for you know to do that. So clearly, there is a market for uh, that kind of concept, that kind of software, and I think it's just the beginning of an evolution that is or revolution that's going to continue to happen in the legal industry. Um, let's see. I also said that we're going to see new pieces of software that have the capability that have that capability in different areas of the practice of law. Uh, maybe, um, I actually saw an article recently where, so there's, there's a company called hello divorce, which has automated the divorce process. Uh, like kind of like, um, all I had to do is go into Google and type in start a business. And the first thing that popped up is legal zoom. Clearly they own that space with the top ad they um uh, they pay dearly for that hello divorce kind of is like the legal zoom for divorcing and uh then there was a uh, a legal team that went on shark tank recently uh i didn't actually watch the episode i just read about it uh in a recent article that i read and i think that they started something called hello prenup you know, automating the or or make allowing people to self service their own prenuptial agreements. So, I, I think we're going to start to see the, that kind of business model um, sprouting up more and more in various practices of law. But uh, I don't think that it's happening as quickly as I anticipated when I did my predictions last year. Uh, I don't think that we we saw a ton of that in 2021. Um, I said that we're going to see an increase in the use of things like Adobe Sign, DocuSign, HelloSign, um, electronic signatures. Uh, you guys tell me. I think that a lot of law firms have adopted e-signatures at this point, as long as it's allowed in your municipality and you know in the area that you practice. Uh, not every not every state is you know is as quickly quick to adopt these new things, and uh, so, you know some of them are requiring you to uh, still get physical signatures, physical notarizations. I also talked about thinking that we were going to see an introduction of remote notary services. That was something that DocuSign was working on. I actually don't think that that came out in 2021. I don't think it exists yet, um, but I could be wrong. I, I didn't check into that and stay on top of it, and I didn't hear any announcements from DocuSign around it. I am a DocuSign customer. They had purchased a, a, a company that and I forget the name of it now. You go back to listen to the episode, and I talk about it in that episode. Um, and by the way, that this um, predictions for 2021 episode was episode 163. So if you want to go back and listen to to that episode, you can. You can get to it at profitwithlaw.com forward slash 163. So uh, I don't remember which company they bought, but they bought a company that um, allowed you to have secure video uh, conference where the identity of the person that was on video could be verified. And this way you can do remote notary because you're able to verify the identity of the person who's there signing on the, on the call. Um, and that's going to be a game changer when it's out there and it's accepted by the, the legal community. But uh, I don't think we're there yet. Then I, I talked about security, like technological security, and um, I said that I think that security is going to become something that comes to the forefront. Um, and uh, quite honestly, I, I think that security is still being ignored for the most part. I think that there's going to be some wake-up calls. I think this, some firms are going to spend some money dearly on mistakes and uh, errors, whether it's employee errors or whether it's uh, holes in their security that allows hackers to come in. But I think that there's going to be some some pains in that area uh, because I don't think that security was adopted as quickly as I thought. And therefore, uh, I think that 2021 is um, was not a game changer when it came to that. And maybe we'll wise up in 2022. The problem with security is is that it's very hard to it's very hard to 
I guess, convince somebody to spend money on a potential problem. It's almost like uh, if you go to a smoker and you tell them, hey, stop smoking because 60 years from now, you're going to get really sick and die. Uh, it's, that's a tough case to make. And, it, you know, it, you could tell somebody don't step out in front of a car because if you do, uh, you know, you could get really hurt or die. Uh, you know, they won't step out in front of a car because they understand the immediate risk. But when the risk is so far away or the risk is something that maybe happens to other people, doesn't happen to everybody, it's very easy to ignore that risk. Um, so I encourage you to go back and listen to episode 234 of the Profit With Law podcast, Protecting Your Law Firm Against Cyber Attacks with Tom Lambot. And um, you, you, you can go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash 234 for that episode or just scroll back in your podcast player. I think that's a great episode. I think that's a great conversation around security. It's awareness. It's, you know, understanding what the risks are and also understanding that, I mean, there are players out there that are making this easy for you. It's not, it, it's not nothing. I mean, it's still going to cost you some money, but I think Tom, if I remember correctly, he had like a hundred or $150 a month product um, that basically covered all of the main areas of security for you. And, uh, to me, that's a no brainer. It, it, you know, it, it, if you think about uh, the potential risk that you have, um, and, and I think that we're going to get some future guests on the podcast to talk about their own experiences where they actually lost money through a attack uh, breach uh, of some kind. And, you know, because I think that it's important for you to be aware of this issue. But anyway, that was basically my predictions for 2021. And some of them still stand for 2022. Some of them already came to fruition. They're just going to continue on that trajectory. But let's go into what can you expect for 2022? What's new and exciting? And um, I'm not going to go as long as I did on that episode. Uh, I'm not going to go as detailed. I am going to hit the highlights and let you go back to work because I don't think that these predictions are going to change your life. But I do think that knowing that these are the things that I think are going to happen or on the horizon, it's worth paying attention to because maybe it's something you can get on the ground floor and get involved with early on and maybe beat out the competition. Or maybe you can do a better job of putting your law firm in front of the right clients, getting more clients because of something you heard here. So listen to it. I'll be quick. Uh, we'll jump through it. But Honestly, I think that the nuts and bolts of business is the most important thing. And that's actually prediction number one. So prediction number one is that historically, law firm owners have hid behind this excuse or this mantra of they don't teach business in law school. And I think that as time goes on, Law firm owners are getting more and more educated. There are more and more people in the industry that are out there with information for you. There are place, there are more and more places where you could tap into free information. There are more and more podcasts every day where you can listen to people who have done this before. There are more books that are coming out. And with all of this abundance of information, what's happening is, is that the market is getting educated. And that is you guys, law firm owners. You, law firm owners are getting educated. And therefore, I think that that excuse of, hey, they don't teach business in law school is going to go away. And I think that law firm owners are going to start to wise up, get smart, and understand how their businesses operate. They are going to start to pay attention to the numbers. And they are going to uh, start to recognize how much revenue they need to meet their, meet their goals and how much profit they have to make and therefore what their expenses need to be limited to. And I think that the best place to get started on that prediction, and I'm not, I didn't do this just to do a segue into it, but hey, we've got this planning event coming up. If you haven't signed up for it yet, go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash annual planning. And um, it's, it's four, four days, an hour and a half each day. December 20th to the 23rd. And honestly, it's 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 the best thing that you can do to wise up as a business owner. 
start paying attention to these things, to, the, to what's working in marketing. How do you close sales? What is working for, for staffing? And how do you set your goals, measure your goals, and make sure you achieve them? That's what we're going to be covering. So definitely come and join us. It's absolutely free. Um, all right. Clients want to work remotely with you. Now, there are differences between their first consult with you, their signing with you, um, critical points in the, the matter with you. But by and large, they want the ability to be able to hop on Zoom, have a conversation with their attorney, and not necessarily have to come into the office for every single little thing. So give it to them. Make sure that you have the capabilities to operate remotely. Do it in a secure fashion. Um, you know, record the calls and file them away in the client files so that you can go back to those conversations uh, or don't record the calls. If you're uncomfortable doing that, have a policy, stick to it. Um, but definitely create the ability to work with clients remotely. It's going to expand who you can work with. It's going to expand who is willing to work with you. Another thing that's really important, most law firms are already adopted it. I might be wasting my time saying it, but clients want to make payments online. They don't want to deal with people. They don't want to deal with harassing phone calls to pay their bills. They want to get an email that says, hey, you have a balance open. They want to get a reminder email and they want to click a button and pay it. Make sure that you give your clients the ability to make payments online. Uh, we're just going to finish the adoption of that in 2022. So... Uh, you know, don't get left in the dust by saying, Hey, we only take cash <laughs> or we only take credit. We only take a, a check in person. We don't even accept credit cards. No, you got to You got to bite the bullet. You got to pay the 3% on the credit card fees up your, up your prices by five bucks an hour and, uh, or 10 bucks an hour to cover it. And, you know, and, and just, just bite the bullet and add that as, uh, as a payment option, uh, communication, uh, with the client. So clients are going to, you know, they, they want, it's interesting because there is, there is no set rule, right? I can't sit here and tell you clients are going to want to be communicated with by text message more than by phone or by email. But what I can tell you is, is that clients are going to be driving the ship and clients are going to dictate how they want to be communicated with. So you better start to adopt certain things in the office to be able to give yourself the capability to communicate with clients through the various forms of communication. Phone and email is still going to remain very important, but guess what? Text messaging is going to become important um, and other forms of communication with your clients. So definitely add those capabilities to your firm. Do it now so that you can then say, hey, how would you like us to communicate with you? Give us your preference and then turn that communication on with them. Firm efficiency. I think that the name of the game is more and more we're going to see firms uh, needing to get lean, needing to uh, find ways to be profitable on less expenditure uh, because the market is not going to take the, an increase in fees, increase in fees, increase in fees. People are not going to want to keep paying um, crazy fees for legal representation. They're going to have other options, which might be do-it-yourself options. It might be a firm that's done a better job than you in automating and streamlining their process. And therefore, firm efficiency is going to be really, really critical for you to survive in the marketplace. And we're going to talk some more about this soon because it ties into um, what I'm going to share with where growth is going to come from. Um, but definitely uh, making your firm more efficient from a financial perspective, um, making your employees more productive, uh, getting your software to do more, all of that is going to play a role in your ability to, to not only survive, but to thrive. Uh, so if you want to be, if you want to have a growing law firm in 2022, firm efficiency needs to be at the top of your list when it comes to looking at, okay, what, what are we going to do to continue to grow, to continue to expand? Uh, we need to make sure that we're efficient. Now, uh, you're going to also need to improve your client experience. People are done with paying for something unless they feel like they're getting their value out of it. Um, the, if, if the pandemic did one thing, it, it really helped us to realize that we can stay in our homes, 
and operate 100% and not need to ever leave and we'll be perfectly fine. Uh, so we can get our groceries delivered. So why the heck would I ever go into a grocery store again unless it was a good experience? So if I go into a grocery store and I have a poor experience, guess what? I'm not going there anymore. I'm going to send a shopper to go there for me. And what's going to happen is if I do that, I'm not browsing the aisles and I'm not buying a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't that I wouldn't have bought otherwise because it wasn't on my list. And therefore, when I'm sitting behind a computer and just looking up what I need and putting it on a list, um, supermarkets are going to lose out. So that's just an example. But that's what's going to happen with the legal industry, too. Um, you know, I think that, you know, clients are going to demand a certain level of customer experience, customer satisfaction, you know, customer um, um, abilities, and you're going to have to provide it. So you want to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success there. And finally, the last piece of the puzzle going into 2022 is understanding where growth is going to come from. Uh, when we look at firms, and this came out in the Clio Trends Report, which I'm going to do a whole episode on the Clio Trends Report, as I usually do. Uh, haven't done it yet. Um, I'm a little backlogged. Usually I do it when they release it, but it'll come out soon. But one of the things in the Clio Trends Report that became very apparent is that um, there are three types of firms. There are firms that are growing. There are firms that are pretty stable. And there are firms that are that are declining. And what was interesting is, is that they, they demonstrated that firms that are growing have a tendency to continue to grow. And firms that are stable have a tendency to decline a little bit. And firms that are declining have a tendency to accelerate their decline. So which one are you? Are you a firm that's growing? Are you a firm that's stable? Are you a firm that's declining? And which do you want to be? So if you want to be a firm that's growing, and I presume that most of the people listening to this podcast are firms that want to be growing... Where is that growth going to come from? This is something that's really important that I think is going to happen in 2022. So we already covered improving your client experience. A client-centric firm is, is going to be really important. Understanding what your client's needs are, understanding what they want, understanding the experience that they would like to receive. If you're able to figure that out and you're able to provide it, that is going to get you to continue to grow because clients are going to line up they want that experience and not everybody is providing that experience. So don't worry about who your competition is. Just think about your client and provide the most stellar experience for them and the business will come. Also, alternative fee arrangements. I can't stress this enough. I've had many podcast episodes about it. We're going to be doing workshops on it. Uh, this is going to be a major focus for our company as a knowledge and education company for the legal industry moving forward. Um, we got to get away from the billable hour model as much as possible. Now, I understand that at, that at not every practice area can, and some practice areas, it's very difficult. But alternative fee arrangements are the key to, to law firm growth. And I mean, just really quickly, it allows you to control the pricing conversation. It allows you to charge something that they can't back into what is it costing per hour. It's just this is what it costs to produce the result that you want. Then once they engage you with that, because it's flat fee, because it's not tied to the hourly billing, um, you're no longer tied to making sure that the attorney is the one doing the work or the paralegal is the one doing the work. And you get out of the business of renting out your staff and you get into the business of providing the client experience, the end result at any cost. Um, and what that means is, is that you can do it at a low cost because you can start to push work down to technology, push work down to lower cost employees. And it, it is what is going to allow you to create that firm efficiency that we talked about earlier. Therefore, growth uh, firms that are growing are going to have an emphasis on technology spending because you're going to recognize that anything that you can automate and make easier in the process through technology is going to save you money on staff and even expensive staff. And therefore, it is money well spent. So your technology budgets are going to go up in order to have your human budgets go down. And you're going to have an emphasis on hiring lower cost non-legal staff because you're going to start to recognize once you 
remove the tie of my time is how I bill, once you remove that from the equation, you're suddenly going to realize that you as the attorney can oversee a lot more and you can do a lot less because you can instruct people to do the things that you were doing before manually by hand. You can have software do it. There's a lot of options it creates for you. So that's where growth is going to come from in 2022. We're going to help you navigate that. Make sure that you come to our planning experience coming up December 20th to the 23rd. Uh, but if there's one takeaway from this entire episode, it's focus on that. Understand that a growing law firm is going to grow because they focus on their clients and their client experience. They recognize that there's a new business model out there that allows, that allows you to control the profit in your business, not by just needing to hire more and more attorneys in order to make that happen, but instead to turn your law firm into a firm that generates results for your clients and it, regardless of who needs to do the work and all your job is to do is to oversee that work and to make sure it's being done well and high quality and therefore you can put software to work you could put low level uh, uh, staff to work non-legal staff to work uh, to be able to get that done and it also solves a major problem in the marketplace right now which is um, ability of of talent. I mean, there's just a, a shortage of good people out there that are willing to come into the office and work. Even if you're doing remote positions, uh, the ability to to find people, it is hard to find good people. Salaries are going up and it's a competitive market. And if you can get away from the most expensive staff, attorneys, paralegals, you can start to work on virtual assistants and, and lower level uh, non-legal staff in the office uh, that you can train and have them do the same work, uh, then you definitely have it made. So folks, hope to see you at the annual planning experience, profitwithlaw.com forward slash annual planning. And I hope that this episode was helpful to you. Gotta run. I am going to catch you on Thursday with a, another uh, amazing guest interview and we'll see you soon. Take care. Have you been enjoying the show? We sure hope so. To make sure you never miss an episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button in your podcast player app. Next week, we will be back with more valuable resources and ideas on how to break the mold and take your law firm to the next level.